Hi, this is Alex from phpacademy.org with a video tutorial for the new Boston. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the sortable interaction in jQuery. So we're going to be creating a list much like we did when we looked at the droppable uh, tutorial or the droppable interaction in jQuery. And we're going to allow this list to be sorted. So we've included uh, the jQuery UI, UI library as well as the uh, original jQuery library. And I also have a style sheet here because I'm going to be styling my list that I'm going to be creating in just a moment. Now inside UI.js is where our jQuery code is going to go to actually make this particular list sortable. So the first thing we want to do is create an unordered list. So I'm going to create some UL tags and inside here give this a few uh, options. So we're going to have for example three elements of this here and I'm just going to type in a few names. Okay, so now I need to give this UL uh, a particular ID, and this is going to be names. Now, the reason I'm giving this um, a particular ID such as this and not list uh, is because we're going to be creating another list in a moment and allowing each list to interact with each other. So, being able to drag items from one list into another list. So, let's go ahead and preview this in our browser. Uh, you can see that we've got some indentation here with the bullet points. I'm actually going to remove these. So I'm going to go over to style.css and I'm just going to style UL. Uh, I'm going to set the padding to zero pixels. I'm going to set the uh, list style to none. And I'm also going to go ahead and set the width of this just up here. To 200 pixels because currently uh, a list takes up the whole document. So now it looks a bit like this, and we want to go ahead and make it draggable straight away, so or sortable rather. So each element will become draggable, and the list will automatically be sortable. So fundamentally, we would go into um, our external JavaScript file, which is ui.js, and we need to use a selector to select this list, which I've called names. We then want to do a dot as we usually would and uh, we need to make this sortable. Now this alone will make this list sortable, however we're going to specify some options in a moment which allow us to create some better interaction and also um, connect it with our other list. And we're also going to be looking at one event as well, there are, there are quite a few events for sortable uh, but we're going to take a look at the update event a bit later. So now we have the list, uh, it looks as normal, however we can actually now sort the elements inside the list. So just by appending on this sortable interaction we are now uh, are able to actually sort the list. So let's go ahead and create some curly brackets and start to look at some of the options available in the sortable interac uh, interaction. Now containment is probably one of the most important. If for example you had one list and you wanted the containment to be just within that particular list. At the moment you can see I can drag elements across the rest of the page and we have no containment in place or the default containment in place. So this uh, is not really a problem but you often don't want elements to be dragged uh, away from this list. We want them to be just be dragged up and down. So I'm going to go ahead and specify the containment option and I'm going to make this equal to parent and what this will do is it will only allow items to be sorted uh, within this parent which is UL. So let's go ahead and test this. You can see that I can't actually drag them away uh, and they are all uh, a lot they're all aligned along the uh, y axis. So now that they're sorted, you can see that we've got this problem here of when I pull this up, um, it overlaps this and doesn't automatically sort the billy uh, billy name uh, below Ashley. Uh, it can be a bit funny and you know not work very well in this case. So we have another option which makes selection or sortability a lot more natural and this is uh, the tolerance. So we specify the option tolerance and the most natural is pointer and what this will do is it will sort as soon as the pointer reaches uh, the other element. So now you can see that as soon as this uh, just about overlaps here, so as soon as my pointer reaches the other element it will automatically go ahead and sort it, so it feels a lot more natural. Uh, and if you're trying, if you're trying this out for yourself, uh, you'll probably agree. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and look at some other options, uh, some more aesthetic options. The first one being cursor, and this is just the cursor that's displayed uh, when we're actually dragging a particular element. Now at the moment it's just set to the default uh, selection icon uh, or cursor. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set this to pointer. There are obviously a few other options, but I prefer pointer because it gives us, gives us this nice hand icon uh, which sort of simulates actually moving something around. So now that we've created um, it uh, to make it look a bit better and we've added this pointer in, we may want the uh, list elements to revert once we've actually uh, dropped them. Now you can see at the moment if I don't quite drop this it snaps back to its original position. If we were to change uh, the revert option to true this will uh, actually allow it to sort of slide back to its original position you can see there. Now this works as well if you were to have uh, the containment set to say document and if we were allowed to move these elements uh, across the page for example over here you'll see it will revert back to uh, its position so it won't revert back to its original position but it will revert back to the uh, position associated with uh, the drag and the, uh, the sort so for example if I move Billy over here and then pulled it down slightly you can see that there's a gap there and that would fit nicely in the gap and revert back to that position so uh, revert works in that way uh, in the sense that it will revert it back to either its original position if it hasn't been moved or the position that it's been moved to if it's not within that particular element or within the particular container. Okay, so now we want to go ahead and uh, uh, look at the opacity option. Uh, let me just pull these down so we can view them a bit better. Okay, so the opacity option uh, just specifies an opacity. If you've seen the tutorial on uh, dragging, you'll know that we can also specify an opacity with dragging. And I'm going to set this to 0.60, and that's at 60% opacity. So when I move it, you can see it's changed now uh, to a 60% opacity. 